It is the year 2472, and the Earth has suffered a great calamity. Hundreds of years of popular culture have vanished. Without the sacred films and texts for guidance, civilization is devoid of anything cool. Then, three incubation chambers are unearthed. And from within, men from the time of the great blockbusters emerge. Now, through highly interesting conversations, they share invaluable insight about what once was. The movies, the shows, the comics, toys, and books. This is... The Hyperspace Podcasting in the 25th Century. Welcome in, podcast pioneers, to the Hyperspace Podcasting in the 25th century, the interweb's first and still only podcast. My name's Matt. I'm Jared. I'm Mike. Ooh, welcome back, guys. Welcome back to the dojo. Yeah, we're in here. It's uh, it's pretty great. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. We uh, we survived the, the first all Valley tournament. Did you finally hide the body of that homeless woman? <laughs> hey, we're not to Cobra Kai yet. Come on. <laughs> oh man yeah it's karate kid part two mike we're here to get your thoughts on karate kid part two continuing the karate kid virgin story the epic saga continues it does it does indeed it's like a whole a whole nother level of daniel son oh man so many more levels of daniel son lots of levels lots of stuff you know, I don't think I don't think we string them along anymore, guys. You, you know, right to it? I, I hear I hear Sato in the background calling us cowards. Coward. <laughs> so we need to uh, let's just enter the dojo and let's get started. Let's do it. I have to say, guys, Karate Kid Two opens perfectly for me. Well, it opens first. It goes into it actually has a kind of a very long. Uh, flashback mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm, I'm not even talking about the opening scene where we see a lot of footage right from uh daniel's journey which i think the karate kid i mean that's par for the 80s course what year did this come out i don't know 80, 86 86 or, okay so not far after karate this is kid. the days before vhs yeah so we got a little recap of what happened and uh, which is fine because as a kid watching this, I, I appreciated that kind of recap. You know, it's something that we see in a lot of the 80s movies. And we come out and what do we see? We got John Kreese. We got Johnny Lawrence. Well, we have a little shower scene. So I thought you would appreciate that, Matt. Oh, thank you. Daniel's in the shower with Mr. Miyagi. I was going to I was going to skip past that to the more interesting scene. <laughs> Go ahead continue no what i what, what i was getting at was what's so cool about this scene with with crease and johnny and and all the cobra kai is this the last time we see that group right there the last time for about 35 years and it's so kind of saying it, they're not in karate kid 3 well i guess we'll have to wait and see but i'm just gonna guess johnny lawrence might not be in karate kid 3 i think you've just spoiled it <laughs> ah yeah I don't oh. think I spoiled anything. No, Trust me. I don't either. Karate Kid Three is is is, is it's, gonna be a humored part of this. It's the Rocky. It's the Rocky Five of the Karate Kid films. <laughs> it really is. Well, I'll tell you uh, something else about this real quick. Is mm-hmm. I was surprised that uh, a lot of the same people returned, like Joe Joe Albertson, the same mm-hmm. DP, and then Bill Conti all came back as well. Yeah, behind the scenes people. Yep. Well, they certainly w- they took a page from uh, the Rocky films in this opening scene because you know we've got the you know it is in the real world two years has passed but they're pretending like 30 minutes has passed right well you know while you're talking about bill conti you know it's kind of funny he he didn't do rocky four correct and he did this one of course but also the 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 big pop song of this from um uh chicago peter satara peter satara yeah. oh, that God. song i remember seeing this video on that but that song that song was written for rocky four and stallone turned it down 
and it went to this movie. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought that was. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Yeah. Because they we did... said that about uh, at the best the last around. One. That's correct. So I'm reading from IMDb trivia on this one. Peter Cetera originally wrote Glory of Love for Rocky IV, but Sylvester Stallone rejected it in favor of Hearts of Fire. Hearts on Fire. Wow, probably a wise choice. This, this, that song <laughs> didn't quite fit well. Rocky IV. The, but there's a lot of the back and forth connections between Rocky and and the crowd. But I remember this music video. They had a music video. For yeah, that I know. Song. It, it was and a it big just hit. Played a ton of mm. scenes. I think it almost told the whole movie. Yeah, it was a lot. But you know what? That was a very that's MTV back then, right? The videos, especially when they're attached to movies, were just basically just giant movie trailers. But anyways, so we see we see an angry John Kreese just dressing down Johnny. <laughs> Dude, this is full on like. Assault. Like I know. I like assaulting a minor. I yeah. like he walks the way he walks through the crowd, like he just like pushes people out of his way. <laughs> like, you know, the, the officiator and the ref oh, yeah. there. And he just like he just like looks at him. Yeah. <laughs> and then they even brought the ref back, by the way, from the first movie. Yeah, I right, know. Right. Everybody was back. And uh you know, he just walks through there like Hey, I'm just going to pee on your leg right now. I don't care. <laughs> and then he's, uh, as Mike says, he's going to uh, assault a minor. Right. <laughs> he destroys the trophy. And, you know, this is the first time, you know, obviously at the end of the He movie, hits a kid. I mean, he he actually hits Jerry a Jerry backhands, uh, what's his name, uh, body bag. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, the, in, at the end of the Karate Kid, you kind of saw that Johnny wasn't the, the, a terrible guy. <laughs> You know, he, he congratulates. Yeah, you know, you're, all, you're all right, LaRusso. You're all right. And then we see in this one, he's like, I did the best that I could. You know, you you really do sow the seeds for a future Johnny Lawrence sympathy piece, you know, 35 years later, maybe. <laughs> but you don't hate Johnny anymore, and you start to feel sorry for him. You really start to see what oh, a psychopath yeah. John Kreese really is, where he just doesn't care about anybody. It doesn't matter if it's his own students. He's just out to win, and uh, he's just a deranged guy. Yeah, this is where we get. This is where we get a little like the sequel, like tries to ramp everything up. Because right. when, <laughs> yes. when Mr. Miyagi's like, uh, "Death or mercy." Well, something he's... happens before that. John Kreese winds up putting his hands through car windows because Miyagi yeah. is. He's not like the Flash. Somehow he misses this very slow old man moving side to side, but he does. And there's something very interesting in that one of those takes, his hand went through the uh, the breakaway glass and got cut pretty and, bad. And they, they left it in. And they left that in. So oh, one of those, really? when he lifts his hands up, he's got real bloody knuckles from really smashing uh, the breakaway glass, which is amazing because I'm thinking, man, that's a lawsuit right there. <laughs> like today's times, man. Yeah. Be owning that movie. But that's real blood on... on uh, Martin Cove's hands there for smashing oh, or breakaway at, glass. at least on one of his hands. I yeah, don't I don't which, know which one it was, but it was one of the takes, and they just left it in the movie because I guess it looked great. He uh, gets he gets dropped pretty quick. Yeah, by he gets his nose honked. Yeah, honk. Which uh, look, even as a kid, I thought it was ridiculous the honk. <laughs> and I'm not saying it takes away any of the credibility of the movie, but. Well. It was a little silly. It was a little too silly for me, even back then. Well, well, I want to point out too that Ralph Macchio has obviously grown <laughs> since the last <laughs> movie because he was yeah. about he was about right at the same height, yeah. Well, as Miyagi, and now he like uh, is like a foot taller than him. I don't. Well, see, it was that rub he got that rub in that in well, half time. Here's he, the thing, he though. Ralph Macchio was in his twenties in the first Karate Kid. Really? Because he looks young. He's he looks not. Really young. He's not growing anymore. <laughs> he's well past puberty by the time wow. Karate Kids he are, looks comes around to me. And uh, so I see. I because I used to think the same thing, and then I, you know, when, once I started reading about it, I was like, "Holy cow! He wasn't. He wasn't a teenager in part one. He was like twenty four. Mm, really? Yeah, he was young. Yeah, he was pretty young. 
But uh, yeah, he was yeah. in his twenties. He looks really young in the but, first uh, movie. So Miyagi Miyagi does the honorable thing and, and leaves uh leaves with a handshake and, and parts ways peacefully with Martin Cove so they won't have to deal with each other again. <laughs> and uh, Yes, yeah, so is that like an alternate cut? Yeah. Well you'll And then see. we kinda of flash forward uh well, I don't six, know, six months. months. Yeah. And six months later. And Daniel is just in, in just a bad way. He's having a bad day now. So we immediately find out we're probably not going to see Elizabeth Shue again. <laughs> yeah, she's kind of a uh, she's taking on the UCLA football team. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, uh, trying them out and uh, and left. Well, apparently, behind. they wanted to shoot a scene with her, but she was like at school. She was, she was at Harvard, school. and she when she was in Harvard, she was she took time off from Harvard to do the first movie. Then she went back, and she was unavailable for the second. But um. But we see so they, that she's. So they wrote her out as being. I mean, they brought. Woman. They they should have just done a Back to the Future flip. I mean, they brought her in. Oh. You know, <laughs> they should have just brought the other actress back as. That would have been awesome as her, but. But um, no, but she's gone, and obviously she hasn't she treated the car. his car too well. Yes, and I love he, that awesome uh, outfit he's wearing when he shows the, up with the ruffles yeah, from his senior prom. He he goes into the kitchen and cracks open a Nestle Quick. Yeah, <laughs> which that's how I, you drown your sorrows, man. Back when then. I rewatched this, I had totally forgotten about that. I was like, the man, he's just quick. He's just pounding that quick. Yeah, he's just empty calories. Nothing like some chocolate milk and just, just hot drowning, sun. drowning your sorrows away. And we see, of course, Miyagi, Miyagi uh, catches a fly with the chopsticks. He's still catching flies. That's all he, he does. But some. but that's the first time he's done it. Remember. Oh yeah, you just had no talent before. He's just a <laughs> talentless man who couldn't catch flies. Now, see, here's where uh, this is to me like the first sign of trouble for the movie because it's sort of like, and I, and I'm not saying like the, the movie's not bad, but we start to instantly like okay, it's almost like well, the one thing that sequels do that I don't like is we start the reset. Yes, mm-hmm. it's like we're going mm-hmm. back to square one. He doesn't have a girlfriend. Yeah. And Miyagi takes him out back and begins training. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have to think about what situation is he in now. So his mom has left. I forget what town she. Is. Not yet. She's she's going to leave. She's going and to he leave. Has to go with her. Right. He has and to go with her. That at his, this time, that's what he thinks. They have to go to Fresno. Is that where for like a few months? Yeah. And uh, and then there's a little uh, negotiation, and he winds up staying with Miyagi. Miyagi calls the mother for the summer. And works it out. And that's kind of like where we where we start the movie with these two. And something happens. He gets word. Miyagi gets word. Oh, yeah. He's visited oh, yeah, by the, the an, shows up. annoying postman. <laughs> I'd like he to, loves this. I'd like yeah. to bring the old lady by here and show her around. She loves this stuff. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Don't you see I live next to a junkyard? <laughs> oh, well, first, uh, Daniel gives him a present. He has... Boxed his shadow metal boxed him. shadow box of metal. Yeah, it's a piece of his past that uh, he likes to forget and display. Something he you know he he works to forget about because of the pain. And Daniel puts it right in his face. Daniel <laughs> puts it in a nice shadow box. Well, you know what we where we were kind of like you know what made the Karate Kid so interesting. The first movie was that Miyagi had an air of mystery about him. You know, he was this unassuming man that worked for this little, you know, no name apartment complex, but he had a rich history that, you know, we got to start to see glimpses of. So the fact that in this movie, we kind of are opened up and get to learn more about him is really fascinating. But at the same time, it takes some of the, some of the mystique of the movie away. Whereas Karate Kid kind of kept it like, it was a magical situation with this, this unbelievable amount of luck that this guy knew this and that he was so much bigger than he was in this movie. It's very surface level. And, you know, not, I'm not saying I don't enjoy the Miyagi story, but it certainly doesn't have the kind of like, like uh, We're, amazing. It's not as relatable as, as a, like a kid for. A yeah. Kid. Well, I said, yeah, like that. Yeah, I agree to, to boil this down very succinctly. You know, the first movie was a very, I mean, it was a, a very, it was a big hit. It was a crowd pleaser, but it was also a very grounded story about like a bullied teen mm-hmm. who yeah. who makes friends and learns self confidence and everything. This yes. one ends with Daniel fighting 
to the death in a castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, yeah. for honor in Okinawa, yeah. It so did, It did take a big leap, didn't it? We went straight from Rocky 1 to Rocky 4. <laughs> there was no That's 2 true. or 3 in there at all. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah, he, he didn't he didn't grow or, or have any kind of experience but, in town. He, but he jumped straight to the, the world. The, the, the uh, movie builds adventure. to that. It doesn't immediately start out like, you know, crazy. But look, yeah, this movie is kind of a clone of the first one in a sense. You know, the plot with Daniel, the way that Daniel's arc happens in this movie is very similar to how his arc happened in the first movie. Uh, we just kind of have, a, you know, a separate arc going now with Miyagi. So yeah, so and uh, just a quick recap. So he gets a, he gets the mail. He has to go back home because his dad's dying. Turns out there's a girl there. He left. He has a he, some guy was his best friend. And Miyagi, he, come he on, was supposed to marry on. his best friend, but Miyagi fell in love with her. So he got challenged to a fight to the death, and he mm-hmm. fled to America. So yes. then now Miyagi's going back, and then we have these scenes where it looks like. Daniel's going to stay behind, but the last minute he takes some college money, buys a passport, and he goes with Miyagi to Japan. Well, so there you go. And I think in Japan, that's where things start to go into the realm of the fantastical. Because the people like Sato and his nephew and all their cronies, they are straight up like comic book. Yeah, they are characters. complete pulp fiction characters there. Yeah, like, you know, they meet him well, at the airport. and they... His nephew is the kid from uh, Better Off Dead who spoke like Howard Cosell. Yeah, he is, you're he right. He is? Yeah, yes. watch Better Off Dead. I watched Karate Kid 2. Actually, I'd seen them both, you know, a lot of those movies. And it wasn't until years later watching it, I'm like, that's chosen from Karate Kid 2. Man. <laughs> well, but, but uh, so it's it, it, when they get there, of course, uh, Sato has a billboard in the airport. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he Miyagi has an amusing line. To, uh, can he really do that to a tree? He's like, or can he really do that? He goes, no, no, never been attacked by a tree. Oh, uh, yeah. He so, asked him if he could. <laughs> Break a tree. A little bit of trivia about that. Apparently, there is his logo for his dojo on there, mm-hmm. and his construction company. Oh, and there is a separate one that translates Sato's escort service. Oh, so he owns a dojo. <laughs> he owns a, a is that construction. For real? Yeah, a construction <laughs> company, and he has an escort service all in this little village. So, and it turns out that Sato, his main, his main. Uh, his main piece of business here is um, trawler fishing boats, and his boats have kind of outfished the area. This was a fishing yeah. village, and now the village, which was robust and, and bustling when Miyagi left, is now pretty much destitute, and they're now sharecropping basically by renting land from Sato to grow yeah, crops. Yeah, he owns and, all the land. So, uh, so it's kind of like a you know very like warlordish you know, uh, feudal situation now that this village is in that Miyagi was not ready to experience. He left it. It was very beautiful and peaceful. And now it's just a mess from his friend. uh, And I just want to point this out while we're talking about him. This to me is kind of like hurts the story towards the end. And I'll point out why I think that, but I want to, but right now we have Sato is not a good guy. His nephew is, not a good guy right and the scene where they pick him up and they think they don't realize that that's sato's nephew and they drive him out the opposite direction Mm -hmm. and i think it's kind of funny because they're kind of like where are we and they pull in that warehouse and if you look in the back there's another warehouse and it has sato in big letters (laughs) on the side of the building and i'm like did you did you not see that (laughs) Wonder where we are. It's like it's sopped up. It's all very. It's all. This is all very much out of a, like a James Bond movie. Like yeah, yeah like yeah. we're gonna take you to a warehouse empty, and Sato's gonna be standing there in the dark waiting for the car. Remember, this is the kid from you know Reseda who is now in like a little crappy apartment complex who just happens to learn karate and get a bully off his back. Now he's in a warehouse in Okinawa. Yeah. And, you know, with his with, life with big, being threatened. Yakuza heavy. 
But um, yeah, it's funny. But you know, we turn out. Was it Miyagi's father is passed passing away? Yeah, he's or, very sick. And uh, Sato gives him a few days to because to, he was uh, Sato's they, teacher. His father taught him both. Correct. Yes. At uh, Miyagi's request. I mean, they were best friends. Sato and Miyagi yeah. were best friends growing up. And you know, obviously, you know, we we heard you know there was a little girl involved, a little love triangle. Yes, and Yukie, who Yukie. who is still there and who never never married married. Never married. So, and here's something else interesting that in part two, Miyagi's wife is never mentioned. Yeah, I didn't like that. And that was another thing I was going to mention because he's talking to her at one point and he's like, I, he goes, I made a mistake. I should have taken you with me. And it kind of like negates the relationship he had with his, it kind of diminishes that relationship. Like, yeah, he, he he was like, oh, you know, yeah, I had a wife, but I wish it was I wish it was you instead. <laughs> well, you know, or, or maybe the, I used to picture you, if, you know, look <laughs> on the on the surface. When I closed my eyes, I saw you. I don't think <laughs> there's anything wrong with a Miyagi in his 50s wanting to get with Yuki a in her 50s. You know, I don't think there is either. But, I just don't think he I, I would do that. I would like I would like to have had. Just uh, maybe a line like, or you know, yeah, like, like she if, she if says, she asked, I, "I'm sorry to, I was very sorry to hear about your wife or something yes, like that." Yes, but that's but those are the kind of details. Those are the details that that take this movie down a little bit from the first movie, where the first movie truly was, a, I think, a very well written, very well rounded character piece. Mm-hmm. This one is a little more had a little more holes in it, and it it just kind of you know it felt like the the script was was I'm not saying rushed, but it's a pretty Hollywood, pretty hollow script. Yeah, well, yeah, there, it is. There's a scene too where they, after they get leave the warehouse, they drive through the army base, and it mm-hmm. it's kind of strange because it never really plays any part in the story. What the army base? Yeah, it, except it's just, for the occasional, you know, helicopter that you have, which looks interest, which is interesting tapestry for the the image, but. There's, you almost think there's going to be like some sort of payoff to that, and there's, mm-hmm. there's like no, other than as like the history of World War II. I guess that's all have, they're trying to say is that, you know, it's really Okinawa, which it's not, of course. It was uh, Hawaii, Oahu. Hawaii. Yep. But, uh, but yeah, so he gets back in the village, and obviously his father passes away pretty quick, mm-hmm. and uh, he tries to bring them together with his dying breath. Which and of course doesn't work. No, and and big surprise, there's a hottie for Daniel there. Oh yes, oh Kumiko, Kumiko. Which I have to say, my not that you've watched Cobra Kai, but she's aged very well. Oh, so, so I guess she's in it, huh? No, she's not. It's another girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's yeah, uh, Kumiko. I I had a crush on her when I was a kid. I did too. She's, she's beautiful. She's yeah, very pretty. Um, Very pretty. So, of course, she's, you know, Daniel through this whole movie just looks like some big, goofy. Yeah, he's lost. It's just big, just a dumb white man walking around. Absolutely. I mean, he's just. And that's that, that's where I don't like the reset, because he's also kind of getting his butt kicked again. Yeah, they're all, you know, chosen and his buddies are all after him. and But again, Daniel, with no sense, like. Always. No sense of self-preservation. He's putting himself in situations where he's like, no, no, it's okay. No, totally fine. So a good example, you know, Chosen might not like Daniel. He has no personal honor grudge against him like Sato does Miyagi at this point. Until Daniel taking a tour of the village. Oh, he, with, ha- uh, he helps a man... Who is taking his? Fruit. Yeah, but that's a good deed. Well, it, uh, it, yeah, <laughs> but at the same time, at the same time, there's there's a difference because Daniel is a is a antagonizer in his own right. So he helps the man up, and uh, obviously there's Chosen with his his lackeys, and, he's, and uh, yeah, he's got the his scale is weighted with styrofoam weights. Exactly, which just seems like there would be a huge difference in. <laughs> The weighing. It of wouldn't course. be like some subtle. But it goes to show that obviously Chosen is is ripping the the locals off completely, which is just part of the little uh, Sato mafia here. And then you know Daniel breaks down. breaks them in front of his face, and it's like, 
oh, sorry about that. And then and he kind of gives him that little, sh- you know, smile of like, you know, is it? It's the Daniel LaRusso problem. <laughs> Daniel could have easily handled this quietly, but no, he makes a big scene. He's a jerk, <laughs> even though it's a good deed. And he instantly makes Chozen his mortal enemy by, by embarrassing him yes. and dishonoring him in front of the entire village and, and basically exposing his scam, which the villagers probably already knew anyway, because how can you not? But at the same time, now that he's been exposed, his honor is now at stake and Daniel is public enemy number one. Yes. And he just got there. Well, oh. okay. It's something else that happens that's kind of important is uh, Miyagi takes him and shows him the dojo. Yes. And it's very important to the Miyagi ancestry. Mm-hmm. And then we also get the little drum thing, which plays a part later. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which uh, I think the issue with this movie is none of this stuff really has a great payoff at the end. I think there was a reach on the drum technique, which we'll get yeah. to later. But at the same time, I how they disabled the former, you know, uh, unstoppable kick. I, there's some good stuff that happens at the end, but there's also some pretty big reaches. But um, But things aren't going well now, okay? Things are kind of going well. Like, Miyagi well, is kind of rekindling his... His little romance and with... Uh, I will say, I think the scene where Daniel is talking to Miyagi about his father, I think that's a good scene. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's that's where you kind of get some of the heart of the first movie back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and a lot of scenes with Daniel and Miyagi are just, are fine. They're, they, they feel, they feel like they belong there. Yes. Right. Um, but it's just when you, you know, you send them out into the streets and they get in, you know, <laughs> ice chopping competitions and it starts to feel silly again. Well, speaking of silly, Daniel in the, the club dancing. Doing Are you talking about the 1950s? Dancing. Yeah, club, you know, I mean. Which I, I couldn't. <laughs> Daniel, Mike, Mike said it best. Daniel just stands out like a sore thumb. In every social situation he's ever in, whether it's in the States or Japan, he just looks awkward. Yeah, he always he, looks like he's just, he hasn't got it figured out with yeah. his like and, mouth hanging open a little bit. Like, <laughs> like he's not a stud. He's not a stud. He's not like, like if Johnny Lawrence was in there, he'd be pounding, uh, oh, you know, gosh. banquets and, and, and smashing heads. Yeah, we'll but see. Not, we'll see a lot more of that in the but, years to come. No, but Daniel just looks awkward, and they try to make him look like I, I like a cool cat, like someone who's cool and stuff. And he never looked cool, but he's there and he's dancing, and he's having a good old time in the bar. Chosen comes to to crash the scene, much like Biff does in a Back to the Future. Well, this is this happens after uh, Daniel wins the money from the ice breaking competition oh yeah they are mad oh yeah that's right was that that's right that's right but the uncle uh also and uh to add insult to injury the uncle is very unhappy with his nephew Mm -hmm. at this point because he's kind of like made a fool of he's like well actually hey but the ice the ice breaking is kind of funny because miyagi's in there and sato's in there yeah and miyagi's even like he's poking the bear he's not you know he's poking him yeah and uh he miyagi's throwing around Pleasure of doing business he's, with he's you, throw, He's throwing around you some know. Franklins in there, man. That's right. He's <laughs> That's like, what I'm saying. And, hey, and he's he's quick to grab the money off, Sa- you know, from Sato's hand when he's done. And you know, this he's you know, look, <laughs> he's like, he's no fool. He like he hands him a wad of hundreds. He's like, here's your college education, and we're gonna get Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> now, so Sato is is the you know the machine in this movie. He has no emotion. He's just hell bent on on revenge and anger yeah and um he's taking it out on the village he's th- he uh threatens the village he's gonna like tear it down mm-hmm. yeah they come Miyagi through and they start fight him. destroying crops yeah they come actually they, they make it to the miyagi household and, and kind of raid it a bit oh yeah that's at night yeah and, yeah and that's like that's just basically a recreation of the scene from the first movie when uh, the Cobra Kai's are beating up on Daniel and Miyagi has to come and rescue him. Yeah. Yes. Once and, again, it's further weakening 
Daniel's character, like just that whole reset of he's just back to square one. This isn't a spo- This isn't that much of a spoiler, Mike. So you know, don't worry about it. But Miyagi gets a he gets hit on the back by one of the spear handles, right? At one point, he yes. gets, he takes a hit, and that's the only time Miyagi in the entire series ever takes a blow from anybody. Is that moment right there? Yeah. Well, they got and- the drop on him. Got the drop on Miyagi. And Sato, but here's another thing too, and this is, this is, I'm going to bring this up more. Sato like tells his nephew and his friends to destroy uh, Miyagi's dojo, which is just that when you set up the importance of that is a really horrible thing for him to do. Mm -hmm. Because that's where he learned. Yeah, and it's it's like I think it's like crossing the line type thing. Like it's it's I mean it's one thing to like you know own the village and mm-hmm. whatever, but he I mean this is like a almost like a like a really horrible thing for him. I mean, look, Sato, he's he's playing for blood here. He's uh, you know, he's he's instructing his nephew and cronies to wreck the village crops, you know. Basically, he's letting the village know it's I'm doing this to you, but it's Miyagi's fault. None yes. of this would be happening if Miyagi wasn't here or Miyagi would step up and just and fight accept me. his responsibility and fight me like a man instead of running like a coward. Coward! <laughs> Come up! Miyagi! So, Miyagi! Miyagi! That's what this is all about. He is turning the entire village. First off, they already hate him anyway, so he's not losing any ground there. Sure. But now he's turning them against Miyagi. So this is a tough spot now that these two, uh, these two guys are in. Miyagi and Daniel song. Well, fortunately, uh, the natural disaster. <laughs> fortunately, happens. and uh, yeah, as they're all... going to do it. They're going. They're going to do it. They're, well, this is it. Well, the fight's going to happen. Oh, I thought you meant uh, Daniel and um, and and his, well, his girlfriend Kumiko. In the, uh, well, Kumiko in the uh, in the hut. That's. Well, that's when the, the, the hurricane or the typhoon yeah. comes. <laughs> oh, you know what I really liked about that scene, too? It's like, oh, no. What? This this hurricane listen, is coming out of nowhere. Listen, this <laughs> is... How did we ni- not see this, this coming? Is, this is 1986. <laughs> it's not 1920. Okay? <laughs> Even in 1986, they could see these things coming from a couple weeks off. Sophisticated army base <laughs> right there. <laughs> With mega weather radar. So there's these things. Yeah. They're called clouds. And they, <laughs> hey, um, they get really dark. Hey, and it's windy. Before this hurricane hits, you want to go over to the cannery and make out? <laughs> <laughs> and have a tea ceremony? Yeah, sure. Oh, r- real quick, there was a early in the scene. Oh, also, we, what's his fa- her, His girlfriend wants to go to America and dance. So, yes. anyway. But uh, you know who else is in this movie? Very brief. Is, uh, it's Doctor Wu, Doctor Wu from, from Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. Yeah. Wait, where he's where is he? He he's like on the street inviting them to the party. Uh, he, oh like, yeah! Come on, you guys got to come. He's also, be great. he's also That's affecting right. a um, a very right. stereotypical Asian accent. <laughs> oh, there's a great scene too where the nephew's beating up on a bunch of like white guys. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> you remember they go by the oh the, the dojo. Yeah, and the, he's like, it's like, it's like another like, uh, the Cobra Kai beat scene? from Cobra. Kai. Yeah, only instead of like crease, it's it's the Japanese guy walloping on like these middle aged white. Dudes. Well, I guess we're we were meant to believe that they're training the the soldiers from the base. They're they're learning. Oh, is that who was that? It, that it is? has to. Be. They're learning. Oh, to. I did. Yeah, they're they're up. learning karate from it from Chosen. Be. So, oh dear, hold on a second. So I'm I'm as we watch this I'm kind of going through the movie. There is a scene where they're walking down the street and they walk past this guy, this older white gentleman and he's rubbing the shoulder of some younger Japanese lady and he's talking to an older Japanese lady. So I wonder if that's some of uh, some of Sato's doing some of Sato's side gig <laughs> happening on, oh, man. on the street. Well, you know, it, it, how can it be a coincidence? It has to be. So we can just assume that's one of Sato's. Uh, well, like some, there's products. like there's like a whole alternate cut of this movie that <laughs> we'll never see the light the of Sato dark. cut. Dark. Also, I just <laughs> want to say cut. Sato's nephew is like one of the. He's so. Skinny. He's like one of the skinniest 
people. Yeah, I, and I noticed... It's like a gust of... Like, that <laughs> storm should have well, blown him off the island. And he has strangely outsized pectoral muscles. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. very strange. I always noticed that <laughs> as a kid. I was like, he well, has big boobs. Well, hold on. <laughs> back to the back to the typhoon. Okay. Uh, it, guys, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> guys, back to the typhoon. So the island's getting wrecked. Um, we got a lot of problems happening. Telephone poles are falling on people. and you know. <laughs> My favorite thing is this poor girl who's like ringing the bell never climbs down the ladder. Hey, <laughs> I know. The storm's on top of us. Let's keep ringing the bell to let everyone know a storm's coming. Better yet. <laughs> the storm's been here for four hours. You're still ringing like, the damn hey, bell. Get off the, yeah, the post. Send your daughter up there to ring that bell over <laughs> yeah, and over send again. The, send the six-year-old. <laughs> Come on. The storm's here. What are you doing up there? Anyways, so so Sato gets in trouble. He's he's uh, he's preparing for the fight in in a in one of his huts, and his hut gets knocked over. And uh, does it catch Again, fire? It's completely surprised. I think by there's the, a fire. Yeah, there's a I fire. Is, is it a lightning strike? No, it's something knocks. I think the wind or something knocks over a lantern, and it his thing collapses. I, I don't know exactly what happened. He's in trouble. Watching them pretend like that board. That's on him is heavy. <laughs> it's like so is hilarious. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back. You know, we discussed in the, our first episode that when Jared and I started working together, Karate Kid was one of the first things we bonded over. Especially when we were, we were doing a television production and on a headset, we frequently were quoting Karate Kid. And I can't tell you how many times I would be on the floor of our studio and I'd hear in my ear, "Hey, Matt, coward." <laughs> Coward, like coward, probably now. <laughs> like, and then Sato is hilarious because Sato thinks Miyagi's coming to kill him. He's yeah. like, "Now you come, coward," <laughs> which is hilarious to me because everything about Miyagi's character says, "Yeah, he's absolutely coming to take cheap shots now." Here, Sato, that you <laughs> now that you got a telephone pole laying across that's, your chest. That's part of the Sato cut. Yeah, Miyagi, <laughs> Miyagi goes dark. He takes his revenge. But um, now I think it's funny that, you know, so Daniel's going to rescue this little girl and it's like this completely over the top. Like the thing is almost crying. well, it's like almost like defies gravity that this ladder is still standing upright. Yes. And he has to use his belt to knock down this electric. Oh, yeah, the wire, that's the wire the power. Yeah. And it's sparking your But my favorite is when he has the girl on his shoulder and he's just having a hard time and everyone's just watching from the window like will he make it i'm thinking well he probably will if someone will go out there and help him well, good for daniel hopefully that'll <laughs> pay off in the future for him but uh he does get the the girl down and and she's safe he, he and well, now the nephew has been shamed because he left his uncle there well he die. no because he no he didn't help he, get the girl down he told him to go help daniel and chosen said no and uh, he just hunkered and cowered in the bunker. He didn't. I like to. I like all the disgusted looks he gets. I know, like people are just looking at him, like he was like, wrong. I was you dis- wrong. Yeah. You disgust me. <laughs> so, uh, and so Chosen then runs out into the uh, storm to disappear. And then, but then Sato immediately has a, a immediate change of heart. Yeah, he's, he's like, like the Grinch. Let me go. And Sato's heart grew three times that day. <laughs> yeah, and all of a sudden. <laughs> All the wrongs that he's done to this village for the past like thirty years. He yeah. gives them the deed to their own village. Well, Wait. the well, yeah. After Sato goes and helps Daniel and the girl get back into safety, um, yeah, he's he's Mister Good Guy now. He he comes in with with his fleet of repair trucks and he starts helping to rebuild everything. He's got his escorts on the side to keep everyone motivated. <laughs> You'll get discount. <laughs> <laughs> You're tired. Take a break. Terrible. But uh, yeah. But now he helps rebuild, and and then I forget the uh. What, what Daniel's the like, uh, can can you do one more thing for us and let us use the uh? What is that thing called? It's the, like the, the castle. I don't. The know. castle to do the 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 yearly festival, yes. right? And he and he says yes, of course, to the white man. He, he's like, <laughs> your student. Become my teacher. <laughs> so, of course, they go back to their traditional spot of the festival, which looks very nice. And uh, I remember as a kid watching this, and I I liked it. And I have to say, 
this is very ho- from this point on it gets very hollywood much more so oh, than the rest yes. of the movie but i liked it as a kid and you know we we're tearing this apart a little bit but as a kid i really enjoyed karate kid too so and i i, I don't want look i you know i i don't hate it when i watched it for this show i i watched it because i thought we were recording this you know mm-hmm. about a month ago so i watched it then <laughs> and we yeah. rescheduled it and then i i watched it again probably i don't know 10 days ago mm-hmm. um yeah, you know, I don't hate it. I mean, I, I no, I, it's not a bad movie. I have, it's just I have it's fondness for it. A sequel, but yeah, uh, you but, know, maybe part three. I have a little less goodwill for, but I think part three is a really fun in certain respects. Oh, there are well, some great moments in part three. Now, it's well, not Joe Elvis not to jump ahead to part three, no. but part part three really takes it to like a ridiculous level of this. Yeah. And uh, because at least in part two, they have like like connections that kind of make sense. And, you know, it kind of arcs the stories fairly well, although a little fantastical. There are still good arcs for Miyagi and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But in part three, it just takes it to a whole nother level. But um, but no, we're back at the festival. Everything is going great. We got dancing in the center in the moat. And then we see Zip. In the center island. Zip lining. Now, I do like the way you see him jump on that cable behind her yeah it's kind of creepy almost. in the you see it and they don't he's focus in the background. on it yeah he is, he's yeah. out of focus and yeah. you just see his figure it's almost like a pop in the lights as he comes down yeah it's almost like uh felt like like mortal combat or something <laughs> so so uh cho Sen jumps in he gets uh Kumiko. he's gonna kill her he's holding a blade to her well, well yeah it's, a butter, it's butterfly knife right uh oh, yeah butterfly. yeah okay oh, yeah. so and uh, which, by the way, I thought was the coolest weapon in the world. Oh, yeah. in the oh man, Everyone. I had a butterfly knife comb. <laughs> <laughs> the comb. I sold it yeah, every fine. I, I got pretty good with. I got pretty good with a butterfly knife later in life, but um, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> wow. But uh, but he does. But he does. He's he's like I'm. I'm gonna slit her throat if you don't get your butt over the moat onto this island. And we're gonna. We're yeah, gonna we're finish gonna, this. We're gonna fight. And so, they have, and, and he. Uh, does he hit her? He hits her. Hey, he, well, he hits her and knocks her out. Yeah, it, which is kind like, of shocking. But also it's kind of funny because she's laying there. Because she he knocks her out, so she's unconscious. So she's laying there with all this activity going on. And it kind of reminds me of... Uh, it reminded me of Christmas Vacation when his mother was on the floor. Mom, don't move. And he thought she was unconscious, but she was just playing dead. Oh, so the mouse, oh, so the squirrel wouldn't okay. attack her. <laughs> so she's, so they have this fight, and you know it's a pretty good fight, I guess. Um, it's a little slow moving, and well, yeah, but the gravity of it helps what's going on. It's not like it's just a tournament. Like the gravity of what's happening makes we it do interesting, see the crane kick. He tries to bring it back. And what happens? Rebuffed. Actually, I like that scene a lot because he he throws that crane up there, and you see Miyagi in the background going, "No, no, 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 no!" He's he's shaking his head, no, and ever so slightly. And obviously, you know, Chosun calls that one a mile away. Yeah. Which? How can you not? Sure. What else is gonna happen? <laughs> he come at you like a monkey and hit you with those tall, yeah, you know, ape hanging so, hands. No. He uh, but and now we we come back to the drum. Now, I will say this, though. Uh, despite whatever, Daniel does hold his own. Like, he is he's not just receiving yeah. through the entire fight. So they're, he, both, he's, they're both pretty wrecked. The, yeah, they're, I would say uh, the nephew is, for the most part, a little better than Daniel, but Daniel's given him giving him what for. Yeah, he's not getting, he's not, he's, he's giving it almost as good as he's getting, to be sure. But uh, we get to the but point he is losing. where he's about to really lose. Mm-hmm. He, you know, Chosen has has eyed him for death. Daniel is pretty pretty exhausted, pretty wrecked, and Chosen's about to move in and 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 take Daniel for all he's worth. When all of a sudden, it happens. They, they pull out the drums. The drums. Drums. So. The drum technique, uh, which which I we, think is we total, kinda, it's something that's totally made up. It is, of course. But, you know, you're trying to, like, they don't really get into it that much. Like, at least with the crane kick in the first movie, the mystery of it. You saw Miyagi on the stump in the distance doing this amazing kick. You know, uh, 
he's kind of hinting to Daniel about what it is, but the drum technique is just, it's almost a MacGuffin to an extent, you know, it's, it's just like, okay, but yeah, it's, it's the, it's the motion of having your both arms up at the same time. And with the outside arm, you block a punch. And then with your outside arm, you, you punch back. Punch back. It's, it's all dependent. It's all blocking and punching at the same time, I guess. Sure. Which doesn't look like it's that hard to figure out. No, but apparently Chosen is paralyzed by it. <laughs> can't, hand, can't handle two hands up at once. Uh, so, so you know, he he gets knocked to the ground, and we have a kind of a replay of the John Kreese sequence from the beginning of the film. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of weak sauce. It's not really... It's, it's for such a big, momentous... When you're a kid, it works better. It works better, but like, come on! Like that scene was a heavy scene. A lot of gravity. A lot. Of, lots at stake in that scene. All right, and it wasn't. It wasn't done out where it was like a, a Van Dam, like ridiculous, fantastical splits and all kinds of stuff. It was a pretty gritty, pretty down to earth. Punches thrown, a lot of blood. Mm-hmm. They're both getting beat up, so it, it was done pretty well. And to end it with a nose honk, uh. just you know what you're selling yourself short. You're either playing to kids too much. Because the first movie didn't play to kids. The first movie was a legitimate movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it was for all ages. Kids could relate to it because they might be getting bullied. Adults can relate to it because they, they go back to their childhood. Mm-hmm. This movie, I think, played to kids a little too much. Yeah, you're right. And it's it goes back to what we said earlier about, you know, the first one ends in, in a tournament and this one ends in a castle in Japan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so. It, it's, it's a different, it's a different Is animal. It, is it safe to say that Mrs. LaRusso is never going to let Daniel go anywhere with uh, Miyagi again? <laughs> First well, time you let the kid out of the country, he almost gets killed in a, on and, a fight and in she's, Okinawa Castle. His, his mom, I always thought his mom was in this movie, but she's not nope. anywhere to mm-hmm. be seen. No, she's nowhere to be found. But, so, okay, so my thoughts on this is, uh, like Jared said, this isn't a bad movie. It's no. not bad. No, it's, it wasn't a bad movie. It was a, a very successful movie, too. It's it it works as a sequel because we focus we learn more about Miyagi. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, these characters are not, you know, super complex characters. So another movie about Daniel, which well, actually when you watch this movie, you see the problem because they have to reset Daniel a little bit to uh, justify this movie and to justify his presence in the movie. Um. So, you know, I think that it does that. I hate the reset. I hate it when they take a character and move him backwards for the sake of the sequel. I hate, like, you know, the stuff with Allie was, you know, well, we couldn't get her back, so now she's, you know, she dumped him, which kind of like, you know, sort of like, you know, Alien 3 where the, you know, Newton Hicks dies, mm-hmm. so it kind of makes the first one pointless. Although, it's it, obviously, that's not the same. Sure. It, you get past it a little better because you do know, like, uh, teenage, uh, you know, relationships don't normally well, last that long. Well, also, this movie helped out this 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 kind of reset a little bit by changing the scenery up by going to like right. movie, Okinawa. It's a whole different set. So your eyes and watching this, you do look at it a little different than the first movie, no matter what. Yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you, Mike. Part three. <laughs> if you don't like resets, <laughs> well. Get ready. But uh, but uh, something I wanted to point out too that um, when I was doing my, you know, I was just looking researching this movie. You know, usually they do like maybe we'll do some kind of comic book adaptation or something. So I, you know, was looking for Karate Kid comics, and uh, I noticed that there was a DC title called Karate Kid, uh-huh. and it was released before this movie and has nothing to do with um the movie so i'm not sure if it's at the end of the first one it is but at the end of the second one there is a you know this says the title karate kid has been used with the consent of dc comics yeah hmm. so they had to clear that through them before uh hmm. I, I don't know how much money i gave them especially after the huge success of the first one i mean look <laughs> 1986 i was uh what 11 years old when this came out i saw it in the theater um, I liked Karate Kid as a kid. I, I liked this movie a lot as a kid. Yeah, you know this was Same. a this was like 
a very good movie for me as a kid. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. You know, watching it later in life as an adult, when you can pick it apart, you do pick it apart more. But this movie definitely played to kids really well. It was a, it was a fun movie when it came out. It was a very successful sequel. Um, but, you know, much like uh, Rocky, you know, you start to set the Hollywood bar a little higher and, um, mm. you know, you, you kind of take it, you, you know, you're trading off, you know, you're going bigger and better, but you're losing your writing a little bit. Yeah. And I think when you get to Karate Kid 3, I'm definitely not saying it's a bigger budget movie or a bigger scope movie because it's not. But I, I think you'll find that uh, although there are some very good moments in Karate Kid 3, very watchable moments, you, the writing has, has been transferred to people who are just writing to make a movie at that point. Yeah, so I think that's right. I think I think if if Stallone had stopped at Rocky Four, it would have been like them stopping with Karate Kid Two. Mm-hmm. I think Karate Kid Three is a big step back from Karate Kid Part Two, as far as quality and just and story. And I think ultimately, and we'll talk about this in the next one, but it's just why are we revisiting these characters? And I think that's kind of what you're left with in Karate Kid 3. But, just like with Rocky, you have Rocky Balboa in the Creed movies, you have Cobra Kai waiting in the distance, and Cobra Kai makes all of these movies better, yes. in my opinion. And, and that's why watching it now through the lens with, with Cobra Kai behind you, it's, mm-hmm. it's a whole different experience. So Yeah, so and, Mike... And I have to tell you, the payoffs that Cobra Kai gives you as a as a as a lifelong fan, even on the ups and downs, even through Karate Kid 3, the payoffs that Cobra Kai gives you is amazing. And, you know, Jared and I, again, talk about this all the time, that we are incredibly lucky to get shows like Cobra Kai to to come up and, and give us access to this again. And it, it just changes your entire... Even watching Karate Kid 2, after watching Cobra Kai, is just like, it's an amazing experience. So... Mm-hmm. All right, Mike... We uh, we come to the end of Karate Kid Part Two. <laughs> Wiser, <laughs> yeah. I wish I could say your um, your journey's going to get better from here, but I don't. <laughs> the best is yet to come. Come on, let's be honest. It it is, but you're um, going to need just... that drum technique to take you into movie three. I'm telling you now. Yeah. Um, much like Rocky <laughs> Five, you just have to power through it. Well, he's learned. He's learned the technique now. He can get through anything. Yeah, because apparently doing this... That's all you need. (laughs) I mean, that's the the secret of the drum. That's Miyagi uh, Miyagi Karate right there. That's it. it, Take it and run. But uh, no, I can't wait. And uh, But while you wait, why don't you check out the hyperspace.net? We got some great merchandise, guys. You want a shirt? Get a coffee mug? You can't practice karate without a good coffee mug. No. No way. But, uh, but until then, we're looking forward to it. We can't wait for Mike to watch Karate Kid 3 because we got it's like a rude awakening. I can't oh, wait. Boy. We'll see you then. You know you can't live without this content. So subscribe to the Hyperspace, podcasting in the 25th century. Follow us on social media, leave us a review, and join us next time as we take you into the 25th century.